so let us uh, move forward and see who are the speakers for today a short video where we are telling you about the event and how this go uh, this day is going to go thank you dr satish for this particular video and uh, we all know now who are the speakers for today let me start with the first uh, speaker of the day before starting this particular event um, i would uh, read uh, this aloud the disclaimer all the opinions views feedbacks data images videos interviews or any other material shown during this event is purely for the learning and academic purpose of the subject especially pharma brand management none of the views or opinions expressed by the speakers in live mode or as recording are to be considered as endorsement of any brand either this event is a non commercial purely academic event and the content recording or any part of this event cannot be used for any commercial purposes so the first keynote address is on the topic data driven marketing creating brands that last and the speaker would be dr sandeep patacharya dr sandeep patacharya with over 33 years of experience in the pharmaceutical industry covering global marketing regional marketing in asia pacific and commercial leadership of the business in india is currently managing managing director of rx healthcare consulting private limited for the period of 2007 to 14 he was chief marketing officer asia pacific for merck and company dr sandeep bhattacharya led a team of regional marketing directors and was overall responsible for all the marketing activities in the region consisting of 13 countries he is also associated with the highly successful brand launches like janubia and gadasil dr sandeep bhattacharya started his career in 1981 and has worked with hosh eventus and msd uh, invite dr sandeep bhattacharya to uh, share his thoughts with us over to you dr sandeep so good morning to everyone this session today is in commemoration of the great work of professor chitta mitra and professor tarun gupta two persons who have given their entire life towards creating data driven marketing in this pharmaceutical industry 
so in their memory let us take a pledge to let data drive our decisions not our intuitions alone we know for a fact that there are many juniors and seniors in this audience today juniors will realize that intuition is a highly hierarchical process the boss's intuition always wins over the subordinate's intuition <laughs> so it would be better if we had allowed data to drive our decisions and that would make us far more successful as we go on our objective is to create brands that last create mega brands that truly make a difference to the lives of people let me go back into history all of you are avail you know have are aware of the various major brands that have really been in this pharmaceutical industry for the last 50 or 75 years when you think of a, a brand like chloromycetin from the then park davis which totally redefined the treatment of typhoid fever in this country when you remember a brand like avil which totally redefined allergic crisis through its injectable formulation when you look at brands like otrin which totally redefined pregnancy related anemia you realize that what was special about these brands was the fact that they redefined medical paradigms in this country these had adv an advantage because in those days competition was less and companies which marketed these brands had a lot of time in order to establish these brands in the minds of their customers since 1970 when the patent laws were changed and competition increased significantly we found that there were many brands of the same molecule being introduced and gradually the pace at which brands got introduced became more and more even amongst in that scenario there were certain brands which had an advantage of time because they had a technological advantage and i refer to things like insulins things like uh, biologics which because of the technological advantage got some time before which other competitions of biosimilars came into the market even with biosimilars even with other branded generics brands were able to make their mark through significantly superior in market performance and in market performance in segmentation targeting positioning and treating this entire marketing as dr sanjay mitra said as a science not just as an art not just based on gut feeling not just based on which doctor i met last week you will hear during the course of today's sessions the actual live stories of many brands which were which became household names in this country and have are there even till today but tell me what really makes a brand last in my mind what makes a brand last is sustainable differentiation how can you build a lead over competitor unless you are differentiated from your competitor and in this the association of the brand with a some, somewhat different value proposition and you will see during the course of today's session many examples of brands that have created for themselves a different space within the marketplace a different space within the mind of the customer in an effort by which they were seen differently from everybody else linking themselves to the therapeutic property if you see a brand like allegra 
which was associated with non-sedation in antihistamines or a brand like Lasix that today is defined as the drug for diuresis, especially in a hospital environment. You can link even a service to a brand. And I will give you the example of Arava and how joint effort was able to link the service to the brand. But it is not just sufficient to differentiate. One has to sustain brand investment and continue this investment over time. We have to refresh the brand on a continuous basis for it to last. Today, we are seeing brands come under price control. And I am observing many companies that significantly withdraw resources as soon as a brand goes under price control. This is, I, I believe, short-term thinking. Because even if there is a somewhat loss in the percentage of profitability in when, a, when a product goes under price control, it is important to redesign our resource allocation in that brand so that we continue to invest in the most profitable segments of the market and thus be able to grow the brand on a continuous basis. But let me start right at the beginning. Before we launch a product, how do we make it into a brand? We start with segmentation of the market. You imagine a market has two segments, a, mark, a segment which is a high efficacy and a high side effect segment, and another segment which is a high efficacy and a low side effect segment. You will see this example described in much greater detail immediately after my presentation. But if we are in a position to create in the minds of doctors that what they consider as low side effect is actually not truly low side effect, but there could be a possibility of another product which is truly a low side effect and you divide the market into high side effect, low side effect and truly low side effect. You have created a segment by which your new product will become the choice of the doctor at all points of time. And the example of that you will hear later in this session is Allegra. You can segment customers based upon their behavior, their belief, their attitude. Doctors who use your kind of product more than average or after launch doctors who use your brand more than average and you can select such doctors and within them you concentrate your investments while taking on doctors who use your kind of product but not your brand as the growth driver. That is how you build brands as you go forward. When you are in communication, you have designed your product, you are trying to communicate to the doctor. What, how do you communicate to build a brand? I'll give you the example of an anti-diabetic market well, let's say there is a brand one, which is a leader and a new entrant brand N does market research and sees that the product concept for N is rated better than the brand leader in its side effect profile, which is hypoglycemia, but worse on efficacy. The, however, efficacy is considered by doctors more important than the side effect. Here is where at the pre-launch time, medical affairs and sales and marketing hold meetings with doctors in order to increase the importance of side effects in the minds of doctors, where they realize that if a patient gets hypoglycemia, then he will stop taking the medicine, he will eat more, and thereby the efficacy will be compromised. After the launch, they, the company is in a position to show data on the superior efficacy of the product and thus improve the rating of brand N in terms of efficacy. 
very soon you find a situation where efficacy without side effects becomes the new medical need of the doctor and thereby brand n which is low in side effects and now perceived as high on efficacy becomes the market leader and not brand 1 which it originally was play the entire game is to play and work on the doctor's mindset as dr shanjay mitra said in his opening remarks it is the perception of the doctor that creates the brand communication is a very important aspect if you look at the pharmaceutical industry in most of it today you find that we are trying to persuade doctors what is persuasion persuasion is trying to change behavior without change in beliefs and attitudes so i do not believe that brand x is very good but because the medical representative comes to me and requests me for prescriptions i write a few prescriptions for this person you will find doctors very frequently saying to medical representatives maine aaj tere ko do prescription diya this is a classical transactional statement made by a doctor in his perception he is a, he is giving something in return for what he is getting from the company which is completely wrong and at this transactional marketing can only lead the the company into disaster because this kind of persuasion has very short half life it requires repeated persuasion and more importantly there is a law of diminishing impact the subsequent requests give you lesser and lesser results let me give you an example if i were to come and request you that please give me 10 rupees you may think you know dr sandeep bhattacharya is a nice guy so let me give him 10 rupees so you give me 10 rupees the next day i come and request again for 10 rupees third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth day one day you will come to the conclusion in your mind look this guy comes to me every day and asks me for 10 rupees what's in it for me and as soon as that thought comes to your mind this relationship between the company the medical representative the doctor becomes a transactional relationship and in a transactional relationship growth will come from even greater transactions and this you get into a spiral the end of which is disaster on the contrary if you understand the beliefs and attitudes and behavior of the doctor and work on beliefs and attitudes like we spoke about through attribute ratings you realize that you are creating conviction in the doctor conviction has a much longer half life conviction although has slower acceptance but when it is accepted it stays for a very long time there is experiential learning that occurs and through that even if you are not continuously investing in that doctor to that extent the effect of your conviction remains with the doctor for a long long time this is how one is able to you know create conviction in the customer population we hear very often that we must balance business needs with ethics i believe that there is no such thing as balance if we work on conviction rather than on persuasion we will do only ethical things we will not need to do unethical things and business will come as an automatic outcome and not because we are giving something to somebody if you look at how a patient is treated a patient walks into a doctor's chamber he is diagnosed he is diagnosed let's say he is diagnosed with diabetes and 
simultaneously with diabetes, he is seen that he is obese. He is seen that he has, you know, ischemic heart disease. He knows that he probably has hypertension, and this gives the picture of it to the doctor of a patient. Based on this, the doctor takes a therapy choice that he will prescribe, let's say, a glimepiride for the control of, of, you know, blood sugar along with metformin. Having chosen this therapy, he makes a brand choice. He may choose, I will use Glycomet GP. In this, he has made these decisions out of habit, perhaps even subconsciously, but these decisions do take place. As a result of that, you get a prescription. Based on that prescription, there comes the question of affordability, if the patient can afford the treatment or not. And even if the patient can afford the treatment, will he adhere to that treatment or not, as, as advised by the doctor? What goes through all of these filters is therapeutic outcome. There may be 100,000 patients on, in this country for a given disease, but if they are not diagnosed, you won't get any treatment. If they are not appropriately chosen for a particular kind of treatment, you will not be able to get that treatment in your favor. If the choice of the brand is not made, you will not gain. Even after your product is prescribed, if the patient can't afford your product, you will not gain, nor will the patient. And if after that, the patient does not adhere to treatment, then also it will not give the appropriate therapeutic outcome. This is therefore a funnel which is filled with filters. And at every level of this funnel, it is possible to intervene so that one can leverage the filter towards better outcomes and better value recognition for your brand. So in diagnostics, you can build in digital therapeutics. In therapy and brand choice, you can introduce software in terms of disease management programs. Prescription data analytics can help you design better approaches to doctors. Affordability, especially when you know, patients are unable to afford the therapy that is being offered can be managed by specific patient access programs by which, for example, if there is a short course of treatment, but it's very expensive, you can provide a loan to the patient, which he can repay over a longer duration of time, thus making it affordable for many, many, many more patients. If, for example, you find that a patient has medical insurance, which can cover only four cycles, and it requires minimum six cycles of treatment in order to get uh, the required therapeutic outcome. Rather than, and because of that reason, many doctors are choosing that if the MediClaim coverage is not adequate, not to choose that line of therapy at all. If you, which, who would rather have given some vials free anyway, if you give it in the form of completion of therapy, many more patients will get introduced into that product. And finally, in terms of adherence, I see in the pharmaceutical industry, many, many companies with chronic therapies start adherence programs, but they are essentially reminder programs. They basically send SMS messages to patients to remind them of taking the drug. But we don't realize that patients do not stop therapy because they forget. If you are taking a tablet daily, one day you may forget, but you will not sustainably forget to take the drug. So when a patient forgets to take a drug, it is because this patient has chosen not to take the drug for whatever reason, good or bad reason. And it is our counseling that will get the patient to adhere to the drug. And counseling programs have been found to be the most effective programs in getting patients 
to adhere to therapy? How do you use services to create brand value? I will tell you one story. We had a brand called Arava, which was a disease modifying agent for rheumatoid arthritis. Its problem was that in the first four weeks of treatment, one rarely got any good therapeutic response, but one saw most of the side effects. One lost hair, one got diarrhea. However, the pain which was there was not going down significantly. But after one month of treatment, the efficacy of the drug was significantly improved and the side effects went down dramatically. It therefore was necessary for us to explain to patients because otherwise patients would discontinue treatment. So we started a program called Joint Effort where counselors would talk to patients and give, tell them to anticipate that, yes, for one month you will have to take the drug, during which time you may not get full efficacy and you may get a lot of side effects. Bear with it for a month. After that, you will get very good results. And this product became extremely successful. In a second brand was launched at one-ninth of the price of this brand. But doctors chose to not move to that second brand simply because they felt that in the absence of the service, in the absence of the counseling program, if they simply prescribed the product to their patients, the patients would immediately discontinue treatment and they would not get the benefit. Hence, they continued with this product even at the significantly higher price. Using adherence to to create brand value is what I'm talking about. When we say that patients drop off medication, we have done research across almost 46 countries in the world. And with that, we, you will hear from one of our later speakers on how this kind of a program was developed. We found by research that patients drop off treatment because of what I call the three C's. The first C, and perhaps the most important, is cost. Now, cost is not only economic cost, because we have seen that even when a patient has the cost paid for by his employer, he still discontinues treatment. Because imagine that I have diabetes. The doctor has prescribed me you know, a, a tablet to be taken twice daily. I have a certain cost. Maybe it cost me 500 rupees to manage my diabetes. That 500 rupees may not be important or I may not even have to pay the 500 rupees. But I have to manage my diet. I have to do exercises. I have to you know, do yoga. I have to do many other things which I would not have to do if I did not treat my diabetes. Hence, there is a trade-off. And very frequently... In asymptomatic diseases like diabetes, we find patients take the conscious decision, look, I'm not suffering at all. So what is the need? Let me stop this entire thing. So there is not, is not just economic cost, but lifestyle cost that invariably causes people to decide to stop treatment. What is required here is counseling, where the patient is made to understand what is the cost of not treating? The moment a patient understands the cost of not treating, immediately the balance becomes you know, established and most patients would choose to stay on treatment than get off. This is where adherence can be impacted. The second C is concern and concern for side effects. Even if the person is not actually experiencing side effects, one finds that people have a concern that, you know, I'm putting a chemical in my body. I don't know what is happening to me. And finally, the C is commitment. And this is people's commitment to their health. In this country, for example, just to give you an example, we find that women who are far more committed to their family's health are not as committed to their own health. 
and for some social reason they are not and it is necessary to counsel them and get them to improve their commitment towards their own health and you will see examples of this for example the program sparsh in india which was done for janubia janimet an example in the philippines in the philippines an average diabetes treatment is used by patients for an average of 36 days after which patients discontinue wait for another 3 4 5 months until symptoms reappear go back to a doctor get another prescription take another for 7, 36 days even in that scenario a counseling program that was started in the philippines created a 96% adherence at the end of 2 years so imagine where i was getting for one prescription 36 days of treatment i am able to get from that prescription 720 days of treatment can you imagine the return on investment that comes from there and clearly i believe that in chronic therapies patient adherence programs when properly executed has the highest return on investment of any intervention that is known to us we've been talking about innovative products but we are not only dealing with in innovative products we are also dealing with branded generics and in these branded generics we find that if you are launching within the first five brands then you can launch as an innovator but not always are you launching within the first five brands so in that scenario how do you differentiate you differentiate and we have seen so many examples of this happening where you launch with a catchy brand name and one of the most catchy brand names that i have seen is the brand o2 i think in most of the cases of doctors that i have asked them why they prescribe o2 they have told me because it's such a catchy brand name i can't forget this name where people launch a different formulation and ascoril ls is to my mind and such an example where alembic which was a strong cough syrup organization but its franchise was being taken away by newer bronchodilator syrups and syrups containing terbutaline salbutamol they created a formulation with levosalbutamol were able to sell the safety of that formulation for the persons with cardiac risk factors and through that niche they built themselves into a major brand launching different dosage forms like mouth dissolving tablets or adding on a service package that i have seen many companies launch various diabetes drugs with service packages with excellent results focusing on the doctors with the right roi you see when you are not the leader when you are not launching it is impossible for you to invest more than the fellow who is the leader you are launching some leader has 50 crore sales already obviously he can invest more than you can but if you restrict you, the number of doctors you are focusing on in a manner by which you can invest per doctor more than the 50 crore brand you will win and through this winning you will be in a position to grow from that base once you have established yourself in that small niche area of doctors that you are created for yourself basically what i'm saying is you find a space for yourself you do not try and head on try and challenge some other brand the brand has salbutamol you create a space for yourself for the cardiac risk patient or the uh, you know the person with the beta blocker therapy by creating an ls or levosalbutamol brand you the the brand leader has 
10,000 doctors who prescribe their product continuously. But you have just 2,000 doctors who prescribe your brand and you focus on them and from there you start growing. Let me tell you a story. An Arab had a camel and they were in the desert when a sandstorm began. And the Arab was sitting in his tent when the camel put its head into the tent and said, Master, there is a sandstorm brewing outside. My nose gets filled with sand. Can I bring my nose inside your tent? So he says, yes, of course, please come. So he brought his nose in. Then he said, Master, my ears are getting filled with sand. Can I bring my ears in? He says, yes, of course. So he brought his ears in. Then he said, my shoulders are paining because of the sand coming in. Can I bring my shoulders in? He says, yes. And as you would realize, very soon the camel was inside the tent and the Arab was outside. So it is not necessary for you to definitely compete head on head with any other competitor. Find a space for yourself and grow from that space. And then you will succeed at all times. Finally, a few points to ponder. We have heard so much about digital programs and other kinds of technologies, artificial intelligence, internet of things, all kinds of jargon. Technology must become the enabler, not the driver of strategy. You must decide where do you want to go? If you want to go to the other end of town, perhaps a car is the right technology. If you want to go to the other end of the state, maybe a bus or a train is the right technology. If you want to go to New York, then you definitely must go by airline. If you want to go to the moon, you need a rocket. If you try and use a rocket to go to the other end of town, you will fail. If you try and use a bus to go to Chennai, it will take you too long a time. So technology must become the enabler. You must decide where you want to go and choose the appropriate technology. Secondly, find a place for your brand, establish yourself from that place and grow from that base. Remember, the market rewards innovation and the innovator much more than the most highly transactional competitor. And last word for all managers, the team at the market interface, your medical representative, his or her empowerment and dignity is critical for the best results. Management actions must not diminish these two things at the grassroots level. If you diminish his dignity and his empowerment, a simple word on closing day saying, I don't care anything about strategy, dhanda chahiye. You have destroyed his empowerment and dignity completely. Because on that last day, the distributor doesn't lose anything by delaying an order by 24 hours. But your medical representative, if you put pressure on him, he will lose everything in those 24 hours. This relationship becomes unequal and the weakest link gives rise to a situation where he will destroy your brand in order to keep his, his own dignity alive. Be, make that your mantra to keep the dignity of your people uppermost in your mind and you will succeed. I thank you very much for your attention and uh, uh, wait for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sandeep Bhattacharya for taking us through a complete journey. I'll take up a few uh, uh, compliments. First of all, Dr. Sandeep, your session is the Great Product Manager Toolkit. I'll take up another question. Sir, now a change is dosage in dosage form is treated as a new drug itself and calls for a clinical trial for approval. How one can go about that? Mr. Amit Khanna has asked. So it depends. Uh, in some cases, you are right. A different formulation 
which uh, may, may require a clinical trial. But most cases, all that the different formulation may require it is, especially if the formulation is not with a different compound, a different formulation would require a bioequivalence data. But even if it requires a clinical trial, this is a relatively small clinical trial that is necessary to show therapeutic equivalence. So for example, let me take the example of the levosalbutamol. Levosalbutamol as a drug was well recognized. Using it in the cough syrup, they required a very small clinical trial in order to be able to get permission to launch their product in the country. So it is not necessary that you have to invest you know, crores of rupees in a full-scale phase three program in order to be able to get a new formulation into the marketplace. Thank you, Dr. Sandeep. I'll take a single uh, question. Uh, and after that, we shall move to the next speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, Dana Lakshmi has asked, in the current situation, launching extension of the existing brand will affect in the incremental sales value. Is this possible? So it depends on how you choose your line extension. A line extension that cannibalizes the same patient population that you are currently you know, serving without adding any value is likely to be counterproductive. However, if you either are able to... So I give you an example. Uh, you have, let's say, uh, you know, tell me Sartan as your product. And you find that after a certain amount of time, the telmizartan blood pressure is not being controlled because the patient's disease has progressed. And you therefore market a combination with amlodipine or a common so, so as to get better blood pressure control. So these kinds of line extensions definitely add value in terms of addressing patient subpopulations surrounding the core subpopulation which your original brand does. If you do, do that, then you are in a position to strengthen the core brand as well as the entire franchise. Okay, so this was a relevant answer. I'll not, I cannot uh, take up more questions, but there are a lot of questions and compliments coming, uh, Sandeep uh, sir. So I'll save the chat and um, uh, these questions will be forwarded to the speakers.